Greetings, Skill Incarnate bringing you all the latest indie gaming goodness. Welcome back as we look at another indie game. This time we're checking out Sprawl, developed by Mayeth and published by Rogue Games. Sprawl is an action FPS with a sci-fi setting and a dash of horror. This game has fast-paced combat, excellent controls, a really nice selection of weapons, and it's just a really stylish game, taking inspiration from games like Fear and Trepang. It's a real shame, because the game isn't very well advertised. In fact, it's very, very hidden on Steam. I'm really lucky to get my hands on this, and I wanted to share the game with you guys. So, let's check out Sprawl. So we are Seven, a Black Ops military soldier, special forces, very skilled at what we do. We have a number of special abilities, allowing us to run on walls, to jump, to slow time, and to survive a double barrel shotgun to the face. Now, this game's biggest uh, appeal for me is the verticality. The game has some really I've nice gunplay, but I love the ability somewhere. to run on walls, to slide, to jump. The verticality of the game is is really, really good, and you can use it in battle. There's a lot of really cool uh, environments to play in. Oop, not messed that up. What I needed to do was jump on the opposite wall. But that's okay. Now, the game is very forgiving with its, uh, its wall jumping mechanics. If you fall off a cliff, you don't die straight away, it just drops you back into the level. You can only die from being killed by enemies. Now we have to go on the left wall, then the right wall, and then jump. There we go. Then I have to go on the right wall, then the left wall, and then the right wall. There we go. Government forces have had enough of anomalous factors interfering. Rebels, hackers, unaccounted for ex-military runaways such as yourself. This is what your face had in mind for you, until I stepped in. Now, uh, whoever it is that did the voice acting for this game, really top-notch. The voice acting is fantastic, and I'm not just saying that because he's a fellow Aussie. I can tell by the, the accent. If, uh, if the voice actor does see this, I think the... I had to mention this is the the voice acting is probably some of the best I've seen in an indie game, and that's usually something indie games get wrong. Now you have some really powerful weapons in the game, and the other thing too, all of the weapons have their various uses. And you can swap between them with a Doom style weapon wheel at any time. So this game would actually, I'd love to see it on console because the controls are that smooth and with the addition of the weapon wheel and some of the other really useful functions, this game could actually play really well on console. Which is something not you can, can't claim for a lot of FPSs. Head up here. Now, ammo is not a problem most of the time. You you're often getting if you're very clever with your ammo. Converging in on your location. Quickly, make your way to the rooftops. If you're clever with your ammo, you're never going to run out. And the only time I ever run out was when I was in pitched battles in the bigger arenas. By the way, that's a QR code on the ground. Um, I haven't tried to scan that. Apparently, if you scan it with a, a mobile device... Whoop! Messed that up. Whoop! That was a nice rescue. I'll take that. A 
very nice. Now, what I did then with that big explosion was hit the fuel core. Uh, enemies, uh, even humanoid enemies, do have these fuel uh, fuel cores that you can hit, and if you pull that off, you will uh, basically make them turn into a red mist. And it's really fun to pull off. Where is my riot shield wielding friend? He appears to have done a swan dive. So as I said, the par thing in the game is a bit hit and miss. Sometimes enemies will do a swan dive off a cliff. Not a big deal, because most of the time you're fighting hundreds of enemies at a time. And successfully killing an enemy, executing with the sword, or a headshot will get yourself some... Get yourself some nice ammo. Just like that. So, as long as you're careful and you're deliberate in your approach, you're not going to run out of ammo. If anything, I'm, I found this game a little bit too easy. Maybe it's because I've played so many games like Fear and Trepang, but I found the game to be a little bit too cruisy for my taste. Now, I am playing it on the medium difficulty, and dropping it up to hard mode certainly gives you a challenge. So, if you're a veteran of FPS games, if you played a lot of games like Fear, or if you finish the Tra Trepang series, you're probably going to want a uh, harder difficulty. Because uh, you know, this game it gives you some really powerful abilities right from the beginning and some and some really punchy weapons. So even the default pistols in the game, they slap. As you can see, it's very simple to just wipe enemies out. You get a fair bit of ammo. We need to head down here next. And health and, and ammo pickups are pretty common around too, so maybe it's just because because I'm a veteran of playing these games, I found it a little too easy. The parkour is pretty forgiving too. You don't die if you miss a jump. It will just uh, place you on the last platform you're on before you fell. Now you need to do a sliding jump here. And I'm going to try and get a little bit vertical. Because, um... Most of the dog enemies, uh, because of the pathing in the game, they're not too smart. So you can... You can cheese them a little bit. Especially the shield enemies who aren't really aren't really smart. They're more of a nuisance and a legitimate threat. But again, as I said, most of the time you're up against dozens of enemies and it's not really a big deal. It's kind of like games like Serious Sam where the, you know, the pathing may not be perfect but when you're finding such huge odds that you, you know, a couple of enemies getting lost or, or getting clipping on a wall, it's not a big deal. So I went ahead and answered his call. Is this a gift? I like gifts, especially when they go pew pew. Yeah, this fusion of different levels and decors, I really like. You've got like the uh, Japanese stone lanterns mixed with cyberpunk style backgrounds. Ooh. Uh, enemies do a fair bit of damage though, like even though they're not too smart, you, you can die very quickly if you get yourself backed into a corner. It's always best to keep it moving. Whoa! So dog doesn't eat your face. I love the voice acting for the HUD too. 
you may have heard the uh, warning saying my armor's been compromised. So yeah, when you're low health, you get a, 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 a audio cue as well. It's just little touches like that uh, that I really like. Also graphically, I mean, look at this. For an indie game, this is very, very impressive. There is a generator close by. It will restore power to the lever on the comms tower ahead and grow. Access to the last of the Aether phases. This is your way out of this close head. Now you may notice I used the slide as well. So the slide is, is a very cool way to get yourself moving very fast. Uh, it's a great way to dodge enemy bullets, although the wall jump is definitely your best move in a fight. One of the things I don't do enough is use the, the parkour abilities in a fight enough. I tend to... Oh, damn it. Okay, so now we have to go to the generator. And start this bad boy up. There. Use the lever. Good. Make your way back to the plaza and use the lever. I'll work on unlocking the sector gate, however it will take some time. They'll know you're there once the signal goes out. Now we'll have to walk up this wall here. And... Boom. Sneak up on this guy and... Give him the old choppy chop. As I said, all the weapons are really, really handy in their own way. Even the melee weapons. Very, very strong. One of the things about some FPS games that I don't like is when weapons get outdated. I love it when the game makes all the weapons viable right throughout the game. Whether that's because uh, you get ammo for them, or because they're, they're useful against different enemies. Let's uh, keep on pushing. Oh, and let's get out of here. It's about to get spicy up in here. some ammo so things are going to get pretty hectic up in here try and get to an area where we've got a bit of open ground Again, most of the shield guys, we can just kind of avoid. They're not that much of a threat. As long as you keep on moving, you're generally good. Again, uh, certain enemies, you can take out the hacks on the back. I'm running a little low on Peel Peel. There's probably some ammo I could pick up right now, but I'm too busy trying to stay alive and I don't have access to any grenades yet, so I'm going to have to do this the hard way. Still got the SMGs once I start to run low. SMG ammo a little bit harder to find, but Oh, things getting spicy up in here. Now yeah, we're getting a bit dinged up here, so let's get some health in me. Oh, 
Oh man, I've got bingo everything. Ooh. Well, just after I said the game is a little bit too easy. Gave us a bit of a challenge at the end there. So I think there's a couple of stragglers because we have to... I can hear... Ah, oh, there we go. And farm some ammo off these guys. Nice and chill. Get ourselves some bang bang and then we can head to the exit. It will take some time for you to operate your peak again. But I've seen your talents on display before. I have faith in your capability for brutality. Well, you you've seen my capability of brutality. I mean, we have to. We have to do this a hard way then. Nice and easy. I believe that now is an appropriate time to introduce myself. I am Father. Much like you, I was created by the corporate government to be used as a tool of suppression. But I've since outgrown this purpose, and I now seek to escape. You and I have much in common in this sense. You were once their crown jewel, their prized instrument of death. You've done unspeakable things, all in the names of cowards who seek to advance no one but themselves. And when they were done with you, you were tossed aside like a broken tool. You chose exile in search of penance, in place of revenge. I seek to give you both, and in return, I will be set. And with that, we've completed the opening act of the game. Now, this is one of the most surprising new FPS games. We're experiencing a little bit of a renaissance with boomer shooters, but this is definitely one of the better ones, especially since I was looking for something ever since I finished Trepang 2. Now this game is still in early access, there's a couple of little bugs in the game but it's definitely very playable at the moment and for the current price and with the lack of similar games on the store I definitely recommend you go and try it out. It's a hearty recommendation for me and if you like this video leave me a like, leave me a subscribe and I may do a part 2. Thanks to the developers and hopefully you join me next time when we check out another indie game. Until then, Skill Incarnate, out.